Okay. Here we are, week three, day two, BES 380, Advanced Adobe Illustrator. Tonight, I'm starting off taking a look at uh, these guitars. I don't remember off the top of my head which one of you had the guitar, but one of you did have the guitar. And uh, I said that I had done some guitars and I just thought I'd bring in the ones that I did to show you. They actually, I think, resemble the one that you did quite closely. It almost, yours or these could have almost been done by the same person. Unfortunately, um, I didn't get yours, but I remember it distinctly and it was a pretty good job. I also started off with this view because I want you to consider for a moment Adobe Illustrator and what Adobe Illustrator really is. If you look at this, what you see are basically a series of wireframes. That's literally what they are. These vector lines are frames or, or wireframes or structures that are created using the tools over here, the basic shape tool, the pen tool, the curvature line tool, the line tool, the brush tool, the uh, shaper tool, the uh, eraser tool, and things like blob brush. All of these tools literally are what we use to create these shapes. But the important thing to understand is that they are shapes. And I think the most important thing for you to understand about these shapes, they basically have two distinct features. They, they have strokes and they have fills. You can do an awful lot with a fill and you can do quite a bit with a stroke as well. But it basically comes down to strokes and fills. So you have these basic shapes that you create. Some of them are open shapes, some of them are closed shapes, some of them are simple line shapes, all kinds of different shapes, ultimately containing or, or holding a, a stroke and a fill. Now, I'm going to go into switch the view back up to um, preview and you can take a look at just a few of the things that you can do with the strokes and the fills. Most of these things work because I have gradients applied to them. I mean, even these backgrounds have gradients applied to them, although this is just a darker gray and that's slightly lighter gray. It still helps to add three-dimensional quality. There's also drop shadows that have been applied, which are effects. They can be applied to these shapes they sort of fall within the category of something added to the shapes because they exist generally on the outside of the shape, these effects. You can distort them. You can do a lot of things. But the bottom line is that what you do, like I'll give you an example. Let me create a simple basic shape here. Come out and create a basic shape, okay? Let me go up into effect and let's go to distort and transform and let's go roughen, and let me preview the roughen. There we go, so we've got that shape. I'm gonna hit okay to accept that. All I want you to do is to, even now as it's selected, you can see that the basic shape is just a rectangle. But that shape, if I deselect it, that shape has been distorted by virtue of the uh, effect that we applied to it, which was a roughen, and if you go to the view menu again and go to outline, the roughen is gone. You only see the basic shape. So I think the most important thing for you to begin to understand about this program is you are working with these basic shapes. And then it all comes down to what you want to do with the shapes. Go back into view, preview this. I can now come in here and I can select this. I can go to the effects and I can come down to stylize drop shadow and I can add a drop shadow to it and hit OK and deselect it. And now I have something like this going on. Again, go to the view, outline, and it's still just basically that shape. So really, the bottom line is you have objects that you can use. You've got the pen tool and their associated tool, which basically the pen tool is the drawing tool. Add anchor point tool is simply a tool where you can add some anchor points to a line that you're creating. Delete anchor point tool uh, allows you to delete anchor points. 
and then a convert anchor point tool or actually the anchor point tool which enables you to take the line and convert it in its two different types which are curved and, or corner that's basically it so if I come over here and click on that one and I drag it out I've just made that a curved point if I come back and click on it again I set it back to what it originally was I mean it, I don't want to try to make it seem like it's it's that really simple but in a way it is I mean you can see that a lot of different shapes were put into creating these these objects here so you know you're working on a lot of different lines to build these these structures that, that ultimately come up representing something but it really still comes down to just basic things like like pen shapes or curvature line shapes text it's the same with text type is basically just shapes that have been formed into these letters that can change and you can do away with that by going up to the type menu and going um, create outlines and your text then becomes basic shapes just like the shapes that we're building here so you know again this is just some of the the very basic things for you to understand and as a matter of fact if I click on this and if I go to the effect and I I'm sorry go to um, view and go to GPU preview again if I want to I can go to the object menu and I can expand the appearance of that object right there. And now that shape, let me go to the view and let's go hide the uh, bounding box. There, now the shape has, it has a, a background shape. Let's go object ungroup. Now the shape has this object here, which is the drop shadow, okay? Because we expanded it, remember? And then we have this, which is no longer just a square shape. Now, watch what happens when I go to the view menu and go to outline on that. This here is simply a bitmap. That's really all that is. It creates a bitmap of that shadow. That's what it is. It's a, it's a bitmap. This, on the other hand, now, because of, because of what we did with the effect and then we expanded it, this is no longer just a straight rectangle. This becomes a series of very complex uh, sections. Uh, that makes a very complex shape. So really, this is the kind of thing that you need to understand about this program. And uh, to be successful with it, the more you realize what you're dealing with, the more you realize with what, what you're working with, the better off it's going to be for you. So like I say, these are, are things for you to think about. And again, you have tools in here, the eraser tool, for instance. You can come in here with the eraser tool and you can start erasing this shape. I don't know that, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let me make that thing a little bit bigger. See if I can get this to work a little bit better. There we go. See how the eraser tool works? I can come in here and I can just literally eat away at that shape. And what it's doing essentially is it's erasing that shape, okay? And it makes closed creative, creative shapes, all right? Scissors tool does something a little different. Scissors tool cuts those shapes. So if I come over here and I click, I have to hit that point, so that's why I'm struggling a little bit. And I click that point, there. I now have literally broken that shape. And, well, they're obviously grouped, ungrouped. There we go. Now I can take this and I can move this. And you see what I've done essentially, and I got two, look at that, I got two of them. Huh, isn't that amazing? I got a, a, a secondary one down there. But what, what you see I did here was I literally uh, just broke those two pieces apart. Now, if I want to, I can come back in here and I can zoom in on this because I, I think zooming in, it makes it a little bit easier for you to really see what I'm doing. And I can align these things back up carefully. I'm going to try to align them up reasonably carefully. That's probably good enough. Now, if I want to, since these are two separate pieces, I can come in with my direct selection tool and I can marquee just those two little points right there, those two little points, the point that ends off of there and the point that ends off of there. And I can go to the object menu and I can go to path and I can join them. And now that end is joined back up. This end down here is not. I can do the same thing here. I can click on that and I can go, 
Let me see if that's three points or what. Yeah. Oh, that looks like it might be already joined. Let me see. No, it's not joined. Okay. So you see, it's not joined yet. I can bring that point over to there and then I can marquee those two points and I can go object half join and I've put them back together again. These parts now become whole. See, they're all back together again. They were all one piece. So, I mean, these are just a few of the things that you can do. <coughs> and you do these things out of necessity, you know, as you're working with this. You want to do certain things, you know, you know, you know what you can do and, and you just go in and you do it. So let me go view fit artboard and window. And let's go view. There we go. Preview. Bring it back. This guy here has lost its fill. But what I can do literally is just click on that and put the fill back in it. And there's the fill. Interestingly enough, it changes the angle of the fill when you fill it back in there. But the fill is there and you can adjust that fill by simply getting the gradient tool and just dragging this thing in the right direction. And now that gradient is more or less back, more or less where it was before. So, I mean, there's a lot. This thing here, again, is just a bitmap. This is not even a, a vector piece of art anymore. Because of what it is, it becomes a bitmap. You can always tell it's a bitmap because you see the edge, okay? When you bring something in and you see something that looks like this, that's a fill. And a fill is basically a bitmap fill in this particular case. You can fill it with a bunch of different things. In this case, it's a bitmap fill, okay? So, uh, you know, I hope, I hope that helps a little bit in understanding what we're dealing with. And also, I just wanted to show the guitars because, you know, I thought the guitars were um, interesting. And I know that somebody, which one of you, I forget exactly who it was, had the guitar, wanted to show the, you know, the guitar. And I just thought, gee, it looks so similar to the ones that I did that I should probably show. A lot of gradient work in here. That's what this is. A lot of individual pieces put together and the stacking order so that they, you know, look correct but there are a lot of gradients in here and that really is what makes this whole thing work the fact that it's got the gradients there are no meshes they're just more or less simple gradients uh, so you know there are time there are times when you can use meshes and they they work but there are also times when you can use simple gradients they'll work as well if you remember back to last week i believe it was when i showed you the picture of um the uh tin woodsman I, I didn't really use any meshes on him either. I just basically used a series of gradients and I built all these separate little parts and I had those parts doing something that, you know, helped build the illusion of the object, which is exactly what is going on here. All this little detail stuff in reality are just little, little things that replicate what you see when you see a guitar. I, I don't know anything about guitars and I used images of guitars to uh, build this. So, you know, again, I, I tried to make them visually look like what I was seeing. That's how this works. Now, I got an email from um, Carolyn. I don't know whether Carolyn uh, worked this out or not. Uh, but Carolyn asked me about, Carolyn asked me about uh, putting a handle on a cup. Okay. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a few minutes. There's actually a couple of ways that you could do this. And um, I believe I sent her an email and I explained to her how you do this. I don't know whether she got the email. Uh, I don't know whether she read the email. I don't know whether it helped her. But what I thought I would do is I thought I would just spend a few minutes and I would show you how to uh, go about building a handle on this cup. I think it's a good exercise and it's something that, you know, I can do fairly quickly and, you know, it pertains in her case, at least to the uh, project that she's working on. So I went online and I just grabbed a couple of very simple cups. I mean, this is going to be rather simple. They're, they're just side views of a cup. Can't rotate this really because the handle won't rotate properly. I mean, I could, but it would be difficult. I'd have to do a lot of work to get the, 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 um, the uh, handle looking right. So my goal here is to just basically show you how to create a cup shape, assuming that the cup shape in this case would be 
just a basic solid shape or you could put a grade in it or you could put something over top of it, make it simulate coffee with highlights. You know, you can build a really nice graphic from this. But the goal here is to show you how to get that shape right there onto the cup, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get the pen tool and I'm gonna start off by trying to draw the uh, cup shape. So I'm gonna come over to about there straight and then I'm gonna come over to about there and I'm going to make a curved shape. And you know what you gotta keep in mind here is you don't have to make the cup look exactly like the cup looks in the picture. You can draw the cup in a way that suits your needs. And that's what I'm basically doing here. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna to try to draw this cup so that it more or less looks like the cup um, and I'm not gonna go nuts over it. I'm gonna do this very quickly. So there, I got that piece there and I'm gonna click on this because see what happens is if I go over here, I get, I get a curve that I don't want. So I click on this, I convert this back to a corner point and then I'm gonna come around that curve to right about there, click and I'll drag it out until I kind of like the way it looks. Now, the other thing too, just so that you know, is after I get done doing this, I, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to take a look at it and I'm gonna clean up those little points a little bit. And then I'm gonna click on this again and I'm gonna come out to about the middle here and now I got a half a cup and I'm gonna come up there and I'm gonna click on that and oop, I missed the top piece, there we go. Now it's connected. So now I have a half a cup. All right, so let me go to the layers panel and uh, I'm on the cup layer. Let me hide the draw layer for a second so we can see that cup. Actually, I think that cup looks good enough. I don't really think I need to go in and modify that all that much. You know, I mean, I got lucky and I hit them pretty good. It is a little rough here, okay? But you know what? A ceramic cup like that might be a little bit rough like that. So I'm not that concerned with it. Ultimately though, all you're doing is, is tracing around the edge of the cup. And I did it in a series of anchor points, okay? There's the starting one, I go one, two, that gives me my straight line, I get a curved here, just a curved corner, I come down, that's a long, sloping, slow, low curve, and then I come over here and I just wrap it around the corner real quick, and I come over and I find my um, smart guides, go to the view menu, guides, and there's smart guides, and I have the smart guides out, so the smart guides are working for me. So now I got a half a cup. And you know, in a situation like this, since the, the, the image is facing me straight forward, uh, I can do something like what I'm about to do. I can come over to the reflect tool and I can get out the reflect tool and I can vertically uh, uh, flip it, you know, across its axis like that. And I can hit copy and I can generate a duplicate which I can then walk over until it matches up with the center. I'm gonna get the thing to match up in the center. There, I went a little too far, now just bring it back in. Bring it back in until it touches, just touches, and then one more to make it overlap. Let's see if it's overlapping. And it appears to be, yeah, so it appears to be overlapping. So really now I got two halves of cups. So really what I want to do with this is just select that and I want to go to my um, my appearance panel, I mean my uh, Pathfinder panel. Let's see, did I put it back? Uh, did I, did I, did it? Here it is, there's the Pathfinder panel. Okay, so I got this, I got these two selected and I'm going to go into shape mode. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is as well as being able to use the Pathfinder panel, I can also come over here and use the Shape Builder tool. So again, there are more than one ways that you can do this. You can grab the Shape Builder tool, click, hold, and just drag, and now I've got this thing turning into one piece. Although it doesn't look like it's working. You know why? Because I probably didn't have them both selected. Let's try it now. Let's drag through that. It's still not doing it. I wonder why. I wonder why it's doing that. And that's something, control Z. Let's try it with the Pathfinder and see if that's working. And that's not working either. I wonder if I don't have them overlapped. Let me see, why is this doing this? Is it grouped? Let's try it now. Yeah, there we go. How did that get grouped? I didn't group that. All right, let's try it again and click on that. 
Let's try it with this first. It doesn't seem to be working. I wonder why not. Let me see something here. Yeah, it's on the same layer. Isn't that annoying? This is what happens. Every once in a while, something like this will happen. And, you know, you can't explain why it's happening. I have no idea. Object ungroup. Object ungroup. It's, yeah. Click on that. Click on that. And Pathfinder. Unite. That thing should be going into one piece. For some strange reason, instead of doing that, it's grouping them. It appears to be grouping them. Well, all right, you know what? I, I don't know how to explain why that's happening, but it is happening, and it's just one of these things I could sit here and fool around with it all night and not understand why it's doing it. So the best thing to do is probably just go back and do this. Just group it for now, object group. Now it is grouped, okay? And it will move together. But I would really want to use the Pathfinder to unite it or come over here and use the shape builder tool. Not exactly sure why this thing is doing what it's doing, but you know, so I can keep the flow of things going, I'm going to move ahead. Let me go to layers panel, let me bring back my draw, and let me place this thing back into position. So the next thing uh, I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to uh, create the handle for this. There's two ways that I can see doing this. Uh, one of them is probably the easier way to go. And I'll do that first, and then I'll show you the one that's a little bit more work, all right, just so that we both, so that we all know that there's a couple of ways that you can handle this. And as I say, it's not, one way's not wrong, one way's not right. It kind of comes down to what you want to do. All right, so let me see if I can move this thing up a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to get the pen tool. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click. And then I'm going to come over to about here, and I'm going to click. I'm going to start to drag. Then I'm going to come over to about here, and I'm going to drag. And what I'm trying to do, in case you're wondering, I'm trying to more or less make that line run down the middle. Let's see if I can do that right with this. I can't, kind of can, can I? Yeah, that don't look too. That don't look half bad. So I'm going to just, instead of, instead of clicking on this, I'm just going to go down and find a place where this looks sort of like it's in the middle, which would be right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to come over to here. I'll come over to here, I think, and I'll click, and now I got my handle, all right? So there's my, there's my handle. All right, so I got my handle. I got a stroke on it instead, or I got a fill on it instead of a stroke, so I'm going to swap that. Now I have a stroke on it. All right, now let me just quickly hide this for a second and let's take a look at that line. So there's my line. It does have one little bend right there that I think I could fix rather easily. Uh, all I would do with that is get my direct selection tool and come over here. It's really not that bad. Um, but what I would do is I'd get the direct selection tool. I'd click on that right there and I'd see if maybe I could just kind of like tweak this up just a little bit maybe I might actually be better off see so yeah, see if I drag it straight out let's see if that worked yeah it's still Kirk it's still got a gink in it so let me go in I'll come in closer and let me click on it this way there we go and now what I'm going to do is actually let's try it with this one if I come up with this one and just bring it up a tiny bit and this one here has to change this one here has to balance out more. There we go. There we go. I think that might work. Let's take a look and see. I think that's a little bit better. Go to the view, fit our board and window. There we go. I think that's good enough for our purposes, right? Uh, again, it's not 100% perfect, but you get the general idea. So this is what I end up with. I end up with that piece right there. All right? So um, what I want to do is I want to turn that into a shape that has about that thickness right there. So what I would do with this selected is I would go up to the object menu and I would go to path and I would go offset path and I have it set offset for 20, which I think is too much. I think this was less, but let's take a look and see. I did this one earlier. Let's click on it and actually 20, I'm, I'm wrong. 20 is pretty good. That's actually not bad. Okay, and can you see there, there's a little line in the middle there? I think that's maybe one of the reasons why this thing wasn't coming together. I'm not sure. 
Anyway, you see what it did? It offset the path. So basically now I got this shape. If I go okay, all right, I click on this, move it out of the way, and now I got a shape. And that shape can hold the fill. And then I can bring this shape over, bring it over to about where it belongs, and I now have my cup. There's my cup. And I don't know whether this will work, but let's try this. Let's try going in here and let's going uh, Pathfinder on that. Let's see if I can get that Pathfinder to work. Now that one worked. Okay, now this one here, let me try ungrouping it. Object ungroup. All right, let me try moving this over just a trifle. There, now I think maybe it might work. Let's see. Yeah, there it worked. Okay, so now I have my cup. And if you want, uh, we can go in here and I can just drag a shape out and I can make that shape a color. Let's make it like that color right there. All right, and go object, arrange, send to back. There, and you can see that we now have a cup that has a handle on it and the handle is open. So that's one way to do it, okay? That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is, let's go edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, 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 add, undo, move, undo, move, undo, move, ungroup. Undo add, there we go. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. That was one way to do it. And you know what? Let's put this back. Let's get that thing. Object ungroup. Let's put that back and make that a solid piece once and for all. And let's just move that over to, there we go. Select them both and let's combine them. And there we go, now they're together. All right, so I have this shape right here. Now, what I could do with this shape is I can close this shape, all right? So if I close this shape, this is just another way that you could do it. Come over here and you can close this shape. So you click on that point right there and you go up to that point and now you got a closed shape. Now what I would do is I'd literally just draw another shape. But I can also take a shortcut and see if this works. Let's go object path. Let's go uh, offset path. And let's go by 20 pixels. Let's preview that. And uh, let's go 40 pixels, 40 pixels, and hit OK. There we go. Now we have these two paths, all right? That one right there, I'm going to make it black. And I'm going to make this black as well, OK? So you see what you got? You got two shapes, and both of those shapes are black. Now what we would do with this is, we would select both of those shapes, and actually what, what might work good is this. Let's go over here and let's come up and get close on this guy. See, I don't wanna, I don't wanna move this guy in. Now this might work fine. I'm gonna select both of them, and I'm gonna go into this, and I'm going to uh, minus front. This is what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make the one in the front uh, punch out of the one in the back. So I'll click on that, and now I got a minus front, and now I got a D shape, okay? But if I take that D shape and if I move that D shape into about like that, okay, I now have that same handle happening. I'm gonna select both of these guys, go back in and combine them, and then I make myself a little shape that I can test this with and make it red, and you'll see that when I do that, again, object, arrange, send to back, there, we have that cup, right? View fit all in window. So there, there, are, there are a number of ways that you can do things. And again, as I say, I could have actually went back to the picture if I wanted to and let me hide all that. And I could have drawn that shape right there. And then I could have drawn that shape right there. The problem with doing that, not that I'm lazy, the problem that, you encounter when you do stuff like that is that you have a greater margin of error. You can make these shapes look different than one another and make them look kind of cockeyed. So what I try to do whenever I work in Illustrator, I always try to think of ways that I can let the machine automate what it is that I'm trying to do. 
That's why I chose to go with the, the offsets on the path, because you can see that those shapes are very true to one another. Either way, let's go, uh, let's go edit, undo, move, undo, 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 undo. Hold on. And undo, add there. Okay, so there's both of our shapes again. That's all I wanted to do is get these shapes back out. So here's our shape. You can see that either way I go, it doesn't really matter. Either way I go, I get a really nice shape that's going to make a handle for that cup, okay? So again, that's just a, a little thing because again, Carolyn contacted me asking me about this and I thought, I sent her some instructions uh, and I don't know how well those instructions, Carolyn, if you want, when you look at this, send me an email, tell me if the instructions that I gave you were okay um, and if this helps, I, I think it will, all right? All right, so that's my little exercise of the, um, of the cups and the handle. I'm going to go back to the extrude, and I'm going to play with this for a minute. This was where I left off last night. You go to the symbols panel, you'll see that I have a cover and I have a spine. Now, let me explain. Last night when I did this, my, my artwork was not rasterized. And I had, it took a, a tremendous amount of time for the processing of those symbols on the three-dimensional object. So, and by the way, let me just, let me just remind you that next week, let's go to week three. Next week, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing something like this, okay, where you're showing a box and you're going to show the spine either the top or the back and front, one of those two. You either do the front or the back. I'd show two boxes, but what you would do is you would just take one box and duplicate it. I might do that tonight just so that you could see and put a back on it and a front on it so you could see the front and the back, okay? That's ultimately what you're going to be doing. That's your project for your final. So I'm going to be covering, last night we talked about the design of the box and what I would like to see on the design of the box. Tonight, we're basically going to be talking about the three-dimensional um, preparation of the box, okay? And if you want, I can, well, I can do this this week or next week. I'll show you how I made that little uh, DVD up there, all right? All right, so um, just know that what I did was I took that cover and that spine, and I turned them, I rasterized them. I turned them into rasters, object rasterize. That's how I did it. You're going to see me do it again because what I'm going to do is I have another one up here, the jazz cover, okay? Uh, no, the jazz cover is already done. I'm going to do the rock and roll cover. There we go. Oh, you know what? Let me close this cup. Let me, yeah, and let's go. Yes, and let's see here. What else we got? Go away. Come on, come on. Goodbye. There we go, and I want uh, Okay, so jazz, there's jazz. Why, do, why does that, uh, I wonder why that keeps coming up. That's bizarre. Oh, there's my rock. See, every time I do that, it keeps coming up. I don't know why that's doing that. It's really strange. All right, well, anyway, let's get back to this extrude. The first thing that I want to do very simply is I want to show you how I uh, make my 3D box. And I deliberately went in and I changed these pieces. If you want to look at that, see what it is? Look, watch, I'm gonna to go to view, outline. See what it is? It's just a, uh, it's just a, um, a rectangle. That means that there's a bitmap inside there. It's a raster. When it, set, when it says object, when it says rasterize, what, it's, what it means is it's converting it into a bitmap. That's all it is. That's all you need to know. It's very simple. And why I did it was because last night when I was trying to turn this thing into a symbol, it took forever to process. I mean, it was really a long, involved process, kind of nightmarish. So I thought, well, let me try rasterizing it. When I rasterized it, I found that it really quickly um, turns this thing into 
a, a, a package that has graphics on it. So rasterizing is a definite part of this process. So, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click on this. And remember, one of the things you also wanna remember is you're gonna make the symbols in advance. One of the things you also wanna remember is you wanna have your appearance panel out. So let's go to window, appearance, and let's bring the appearance panel out, okay? And let's put the appearance panel right there so we can get it, all right? There's the appearance panel. Reason I want the appearance panel, once I put the 3D onto this shape, the appearance panel is where I can go back in and edit it. It's very important for you to understand that. The appearance panel is a really good panel to get used to. You can do a lot of things with it. If you track what you're doing when you work on things by virtue of watching what happens in the appearance panel, you, you have a greater measure of control over what you're working on. Right now, this shows you it has no stroke. It's a path with no stroke and a fill. The opacity is set to default, which is 100% opaque. You're seeing everything. All right, so we go, this is selected. Go to the effect, go to 3D, and we're gonna go to extrude and bevel. Now, I got this going off axis front this way. I can come in and I can go off axis uh, right. I'm, let's preview it, there you go. Off axis right, I get that. Off axis left, I get that, all right? Um, what I think, I, th the problem I have with this is it's too extreme, so I'm gonna spin it around. I'm gonna try to find the front, there's the front. So now I'm looking at the front, and what I want to do is I want to get this thing with a little bit of perspective on it. So I want it to look sort of like that. That's the look I'm going for, but I want it to be a little bit straighter. I'm you know, really going to try to get this thing played. Now you can come in here and you can play around with these, but I got to tell you, they're not easy to deal with. They're really tricky. I, I don't particularly like using them very much because they're a little bit hard to manage. I find, generally speaking, it's a lot easier for me to just come in here and tweak this box, you know, and get the angle that I'm looking for. Once I get the angle that I'm looking for, you know, I'm good to go. All right, so I'm gonna just play with this until I get the angle. See, and it, you can see the um, wireframe on this thing when you're doing it, all right? Now, you know what? It might be better if I came in here and I extruded this some. So I'm gonna make this 100. So it's now 124. Hey, 124 is not bad. Maybe that might be all right. So let's just get this thing, uh, and let's see what happens with perspective. Let me put some perspective on this. Yeah, that actually is starting to look pretty good. That's starting to look pretty good. I think what I might want to do, though, no, I might leave it alone for now. Let's just take a look and see what we got. Okay, so I put a perspective of 40 on this, and it'll say custom rotation because I'm sort of dragging this thing around, I'm, and I'm setting the angle that I want this at. Now, the extrude depth is for your side, okay? It has nothing to do with the faces. What you can do is you can come to the more options and you can play around with the lighting source, all right, and move the lighting source around. Okay, now if you see what I did, you see how the lighting source is hitting the side there? I want that lighting source to come around on the front. So I'm gonna place it over here somewhere. Now, if I want, I can come in here and I can create a new light and I can bring that light over and I can illuminate the side as well. There's a number of things that I can do with this, all right? I can add more light to it, make it a bigger light, or I can send it to the back. Usually it doesn't, well, I'm, I'm not finding it helps me very much, so I'll bring it forward, all right, and maybe delete that light. And I, maybe I'll leave these two lights for the time being. But you can also change the intensity and the ambience of the light playing around with it. And that's what I would recommend that you do actually, go in and play with this slightly. Uh, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to hit map art. The moment I do that, what's nice about this is you get the bright red wireframe that shows you the surface. Looks to me like the front surface is the first surface. There's six surfaces. This is a very simple shape. Six, there's two, there's a top, a bottom, left and right, front and back. So I have, uh, surface one, and I know that on surface one, I'm gonna put the cover, so I'm gonna select the cover, and that goes on there, but I have to scale to fit it. And now, you see how quickly this is happening? If you watched a video last night, when I was doing this last night, this thing was taking forever. Now, for some weird reason, I got this white edge here, so what, what I get is that, and that's not what I want. 
So what I have to do is I have to take this thing and I have to make it a little bit bigger. There, just about like that. And I think I got to go down a little bit more. Let's see, right about there. Uh, too much. Let me come back up a bit. That's good. Okay, so there's this white thing here that's part of my, you see, watch when I come back. I'll come back and show you what I'm talking about. See it? It makes this white, it, it, it's, it's transparent. So what you're seeing is actual the, the color of the shape. But you don't want to see that. You want to see the actual art on the entire surface of the face. See how, how manageable this is now that I've turned it into a raster? All this is happening like zoom, zoom, zoom real quick. Shade it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to my next. Let's go to two. And that is the back. And I don't like the way that shade looks. Let me get rid of that. I don't like that at all. Let's go to three. And that looks like it's the end that I want. So I'm going to go up to my surface and I'm going to put the spine on it. And there's the spine. And what I'll do with the spine, you see it's not fitting properly. I'll scale the spine to fit. And now that is fitting. It looks terrible here, but it looks pretty good right there. I'm going to hit OK with this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit, oh, come on. I'm going to hit OK with this. Now, there it is, 3D extrude and bevel in the appearance panel. See it? And when I deselect that, there is my, uh, my 3D extrude and bevel. Now, I'm looking at this, and it looks like it's a little bit funky on the edge right there. So probably what I would do is go in and, and reselect this thing, bring it in, uh, preview it, go into map art. Come on. Oh, you know what? I, I, I didn't have it selected. There we go. Now let's double click on this and let's preview it and let's go to map art. And I'm just going to see if I can move this a tiny bit over and make this thing I went too far, I think. Yeah, see, I'm back on it again. There we go. I don't, that might be all I need. Let's see. It's okay. Yeah, that's pretty much, well, you know, it's still a little bit weird there, but uh, I would move it over just slightly. Let's see what happens if I put something in the background black behind it. Let's, let's do that, see what we get. Object, arrange, send to back. There, yeah, see, it's a little bit weird on that one edge. So when you have a situation like that, you just come back in, preview the thing, go back in the map art and move it over slightly, move the artwork over just a tiny bit. I again went a little too far with it, but what I can do is I can do this. I can just pull it to adjust it there, and I think that might work. And let's see if it does. Yeah, in fact, that's pretty good. There we go. Okay, so there's your now. This blue doesn't work because it's too close to that blue, but you know, if you put a color back behind it or a gradient or something, that'll look pretty good. I'm going to just delete that for the time being. So there's your box, and of course, you know, by selecting this thing. You can come into 3D Extrude and Bevel, preview it, and you can start playing around with these custom rotations. There, I made it straight on front. I'm going to make it um, off axis front. There we go. Now, you're not seeing any graphic on the side because we didn't put any graphic on that particular side. There's also no graphic on the top. If you want, you can come in here and you can go to Map Art. And you can go to section five, yeah, section five, and then choose the spine, and you can apply the spine to that side as well, okay? Um, if you want, you could even come in and put something on the top. You know, it's, it's totally up to you. I wouldn't put it on the top, but you could have it on, on both sides. So now I actually have that piece of art on that, and I got it on the other side as well, all right? Um, or you could create ind individual sides. You could create something diff different for that particular side than what's on the other side. It's totally up to you what you want to do. The bottom line is that, you know, you have the ability with this to play around with different angles. There, see, it, again, some of these angles aren't worth very much for our particular purpose. Uh, 
yeah, this one's not bad. That's kind of an interesting thing, but you should have something on the top if you're going to go with something like that. All right. Off axis top. See, it's, it's cool because you really, yeah, now there you go. So you can actually have this box laying down. I mean, it's very cool. And now, of course, the other thing that you could do is you could come in here and you could start tweaking this thing and just start tweaking this thing around and you can get some kind of a presentation like this, which is also pretty nice. I mean, I like this a lot, this kind of thing. That uh, graphic right there on the side is upside down. So what you would have to do with that is you'd have to see whether you could possibly rotate this thing. Let's go to map art and let's see that is that side. So we'd have to try to turn this around. This might be a pain. In, oh, it's not that bad. No, I did it. There we go. Look at that. I did it. I'll be darned. And let's go back in here and let's hit OK. One of the big problems with this whole process is that these panels are huge and you can't adjust them. I'm working on a, um, I think it's a 15-inch uh, monitor. So mine is kind of like covering everything. But when you get done, hit OK. There you go. You can see that this is working pretty nice. And you always go back to your appearance panel, 3D extrude and bevel. When you want to do this, you're going to preview it. Actually, hit, hit cancel because I don't have it again. I don't have it selected. Always make sure you got it selected. And again, if you go to the view menu and go to outline, see what you see? This is the most incredible thing. I mean, you're looking at this entirely rendered 3D box that has graphics applied to it. And it's all being done from this crazy frame right here. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what it's doing, you know? And you go back to the uh, view menu, go to GPU preview. Now, here's the other thing. Once you get this thing doing what you want it to do, and I'm not saying that this is, in fact, doing what I want it to do, but let's say it is, all right? What I can do is I can select this guy, and I can go to the object menu, and I can go expand appearance. Now, watch what happens when I do that. There, look at that. It is no longer a rectangular shape. It's actually a whole series of shapes. Go to the view menu and go to outline and look at what it is. It's a whole series of shapes. So this is now expanded. What you can't do with this anymore is you can't go back into, uh, when you select this thing, you can't go back into um, the appearance panel. Where did it go here? No, that's transparency, the appearance. Where's the appearance? That's it. Uh, see, right now, this no longer has, uh, it no longer has the, the original um, information on it. This has been changed into something new, okay? So this is, this is basically it, and I would not be doing this. Let's go edit undo to get this back out. All right, now I can click on this. If I go to my appearance panel, it's back. I can go to extrude and bevel, and I think what I'm going to try to do is let's preview it. And this is another thing I just want to point out. I just want you to see how well this is behaving tonight. This is very important for you to understand. The reason this is behaving so well is because I rasterized my graphics before I put them in. I like that, I like that shape a lot better. So I'm going to go OK with that. And then I can go Object Rasterize. And I've made it permanent. OK? There it is. It's now permanent. There we go. It is now permanent. All right. Again, you can't go back in and you can't adjust the, the three dimensional quality on this. So you don't have to make it permanent. The only reason you would make it permanent is because you've decided that you have it in the direction and angle and orientation that you want. And then you can go ahead and make it permanent. All right. That's what you guys are going to be doing next week. You're going to be putting together something that looks like this and this is kind of what it looks like okay so again what I'm going to do with this let me get rid of that and this is gonna go no okay um, so I have my rock poster here what I think I'm going to do with this is I'm going to show you from creation right on to creating a box how I do this so the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, which is one of the backgrounds, and I'm going to go edit, copy. Then I'm going to go file new, and I'm going to come up, and uh, I got 
five artboards. I just want one. I want one artboard and I want it to be, I don't want pixels. I want inches and I want it to be, I don't want it to be 35 inches. I want it to be like, uh, width is, uh, 11. Ah, Jesus again. There we go. 11 and height will be, um, 8.5, 8.5 and hit create. Okay. And let's go edit paste. Okay, now the reason that I did this is because I need something. I need something to create a box from. And I want the box to be the exact correct size of the art that I've made. Okay? And this is one of the black, black panels from the back of the art. I don't know what color this is actually. It's not black. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to see. See, it's some crazy color. It's not black. I want it to be black. There, that's much better. So I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm just going to call this um, rock box. Okay. And hit save. All right. Hit okay. So now I've got this box made, and it probably is a little bit big. So I'm going to go view zoom out, I think. Yeah, I think I'd rather leave it a little bit bigger. So let's go zoom out again. Let's go view, zoom out again. There we go. And let me get the page tool and let me make the page a little bit bigger. Just so we got a little bit more room. I can always change the size of this later on, but right now I'm just going to give this a little bit more room here. Because what I want to do is I want to put a front, a side and a back on this. That's what I really want to do. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to drag a duplicate. So now I actually have two of these guys and I probably should make the board a little bit bigger still. Yeah, that's a little better. There. All right. So now I, I got two of these guys. All right. And if you look at my symbols, I don't have any symbols. I got the same junky symbols that um, come when you open up a new document. Keep that in mind. Whatever, whenever you open up a new document, you take a look in your symbols panel, you get these symbols that you don't want, you come over here and you select all unused and you get rid of them, delete them, yes, they're gone. Same thing with your colors. Now, I'm not really gonna be doing anything with the colors in here, but just as a reminder that you do this, you come up here, select all unused, and you hit the garbage can, delete them, and they're all gone, and then you can make your own colors and put your own colors in here. Again, you're not it's not necessary for you to do it with this, but I want to remind you of these things because I want to train you to start thinking and start doing these things. These are good things that you should be doing, all right? Uh, make sure that you have your appearance panel out. Um, what I should do is I should take the appearance panel and I should put the appearance panel right at the top of this, uh, uh, yeah, right at the top of this, because in this particular case, the appearance panel is what I am going to be using a lot of. So I would have that up there. And then what I would do is I would move this thing over a little bit like that, so I got some space. All right, so let's go back to the Rock CD. So I got the back, and you can see these are all live elements. These are all live elements. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna rasterize all three of these. The first thing that I want you to understand is it's always a good idea in case something goes wrong. It's always a good idea to keep your original work intact. Okay. Even when it comes to such things as the uh, text, see how that text is live text. All right. Uh, you should try to do that as well. Now this, this is something, let me just double click on this. Yeah, see, I got this funny black here. I don't want that funny black. Let me fix that. I don't know why that is. All right, let me try this one. I just got to fix these because I'm completely crazy and I, these things really bother me. See, it's not black. I don't, I want it to be black. Jeez. All right, let's do that one too. Let's get them to be all black. See, it's not black. There we go. Now it's all black. Much better. Okay, so... Um, the jazz I'm going to get rid of. We don't need that anymore for now. Uh, save changes. No, I didn't really make any changes. And then what else do I got here? I got a rock box. There we go. Okay. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this intact. I'm going to go file, 
save as, and I'm going to call this rock CD and underscore uh, raster, R A S T E R, raster, and hit save. So the reason I'm doing it, and just leave all this intact. The only thing that you might consider here, if, if you're really working on something, you might consider the version. Uh, there are different versions here, and the only reason you worry about something like this is if, say, somebody, and this is more common than you might think, somebody might have CS6 or CS5 you're working with, and if they are, you would want to uh, send them this version in CS6 or CS5, depending upon what they have. But that's another thing, and it's it's not it's not um, uh, it's not always uh, necessary. All right, so I'm going to just hit OK on this, and now this is Rock CD Raster. What happened essentially, just so that you know, Rock CD went back in to sleep, and now I'm in the raster version, which is my saved version, and I'm going to turn these into rasters. So I start with this panel here. Now, also keep in mind we got these we got these in here. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to select all unused and I'm going to delete them. Now I have no symbols in there. I select this object rasterize, and here's what's important for you to know: you have color mode, you have CMYK, grayscale, or bitmap. You don't want grayscale, you don't want bitmap, you want CMYK. So leave it at three CMYK. Resolution, um, in our case, you can go at 300 pixels per inch, but to be totally honest with you, for what we're doing right here, right now, you don't need 300. You could go very easily with 150. Now, what that means essentially is the, the quality is gonna be a little bit less and the size is gonna be a little bit smaller which is good thing, okay? And then art, optimize, super sample, leave all this alone, and you could go either background white or transparent. You might wanna go transparent just for the heck of it. And then hit okay, and there. That has become a raster. You can tell, watch, view, outline. Look, see all the stuff? Look at that, that's a raster. This isn't. That isn't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make all these rasters. So we'll click on this guy right here and drag through everything to select the whole thing and then go object rasterize. CMYK, 150 medium, transparent, hit okay. Now it's a raster, cool, really cool. I almost like doing this because you can really see what's going on. And my whole point of doing this is I want you to really understand what we're doing here, okay? So we're gonna take all this stuff and we're going to convert it. You see there's even stuff down here. Uh, object rasterize. Again, CMYK, medium, hit OK. Now, let's go to the view and let's go to GPU preview. The, they, those three pieces are ready to be made into symbols. So what I'm going to do is one at a time, click on this guy, drag and drop him in. And when the symbol options come up, I'm going to call this rock underscore f r o n oops and t rock front and you can leave it be as a movie clip if you want i like to make it a, a graph or a graphic instead i just do it and also these registration points these are kind of important for you to understand and you can you can pin this thing to the upper left corner to center the top center the top right uh, you can go to the left, the center. I always generally leave it right into the middle. I just, I just do. Uh, so, but you don't have to. You can change it. Uh, I'm going to hit OK, and now there's my first uh, graphic right in there. That's my front. Now let's do the side. Drag the side in, and we're going to call that spine. And that is also going to be a graphic and I'll leave it the way it is, hit okay. Okay, but if you remember, we have a problem with the spine. Uh, but I'm gonna let it go right now, and we'll fix that later, okay? Third one, click and drag it in, and this is going to be back, okay? 
and it's going to be, again, a graphic, hit OK, and now we have that. Now, if I click on this, what you see, instead of the shape out here, what you see is that little center cross. Watch here. There it is. That's the little piece that you get when you decide where that, um, where that thing gets uh, center or where it gets locked into. Same right here, all three of them. So I'm going to select all three of these guys. All right? Got them all. Edit copy. Let's go to rock box. Let's go edit paste. Look. Okay? I can delete them now because they're in there. That's all I wanted to do is I just wanted to bring these three guys in. Now they're in there. Okay? That's all I was trying to do. So I just copied and pasted them into this document. They now are up in the symbols panel, and I'm able to go in there and use these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this guy over here. I'm going to go to the – and remember now, what I'm doing is I'm going through the process of doing what you have to do next week. You already know that you have to build these packages, um, these packages, the, their uh, CD boxes. You have to do a front, a side, a back, or a front, side, top, whatever you want to do. A front, side, and a top you can do, a front, side, and a back. Either way, you should have three surfaces at least, okay? So I select the first one, and I'll go Effect 3D, and let's go Extrude and Bevel. And I'm going to hit Preview, and I get that, which is not what I want. So I'm going to see what I can, what I can do with this. All right, I get that, which I don't like at all. That is no good. So let's bring that back around here. Okay, and let's try just dragging the thing like this. I think that's probably going to do better for me. I'm going to come in here and see if I can get this thing to stand the way I want it to stand. I want it something, and I want it straight. That's the other problem, too. I want it to be kind of straight. The real tricky thing to do to maneuver this thing, and that might be okay. Let's try extruding this out to 100. That's way too much. Let's try making it. Let's get the light source on the side, too. Still ain't barely seeing it. Let's make it 100. All right, let's see if that works. Um, that might be okay. Uh, I'm not crazy about the positioning yet, but I can still maneuver this thing and fix it. Let's go into perspective and let's add some perspective. There we go. And now, see, the perspective makes it look a lot better. Immediately, it starts looking a lot better. Okay, so I think this is now looking pretty good. So let's go to map art, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm on what I believe is the first side, so I'm going to click on the front, okay, and I'm going to scale to fit, and it looks like it actually scaled to fit automatically. Then I'm going to go on to my other sides, and there's my the end that I want, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put the spine in, okay? Now, the spine does this, and we're going to have trouble with this guy. See, this is, you see it wants to jump right back up? Yeah. So you're going to have a lot of trouble getting this thing to behave. All right? So we're going to have to deal with the spine in a minute. So let's, let's first of all get off of the spine, and let's go to the back. There's the back. No, that's the top. Uh, one, two, three. Whoops. Ah. There it is. There's the back. Let's put the back on it. And put the back on it. And let's fit the back, scale to fit the back. That's all we have to do. Let's hit OK for right now. OK, so we got that much done. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to hit OK here. Then I'm going to come in here to the spine. And I'm going to double click on the spine. And I'm going to take the spine and I am going to select it. And I'm going to get my free transform tool. And I'm going to click the shift key. And I'm just going to lay that down like that. That's what I'm going to do with it and hit OK. Now it's fixed. All right. And what I can do is I can go back into my 3D. Let's go back to my appearance panel. 
and let's double click on this, bring us back in, hit preview. Let's go to map art again, and let me find that side first of all. Like that, like that, that's the side. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put the spine on. And there it is, I'm going to scale to fit. There we go, that looks pretty good. So I'll hit OK. And now I can start looking at this. I can start moving this thing around. And you see there's the back. Look at that. There's the back. There's the front. Okay. This thing is all set up. So let's get that thing positioned the way I want it. And I think I want it something on the order of this. Get it right the way I want it. There's probably pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's leading a little bit. I don't like the way it's tipping forward a little bit. Try to get it. That's good. I can leave it like that. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, we'll do the same thing with this guy because we want to be able to show the back. All right. Um, so I'm going to click on this guy, go to Effect uh, 3D, or it, you can now click on Extrude and Bevel and then hit Preview. And see, it applies this. This is what you don't want. So hit cancel. What you want to do is go to effect 3D, extrude and bevel. All right. And then I'm going to preview this thing. And what I want to do is I want to get that thing to where it is more or less opposite of what you see on the other side. Let's do a little bit of perspective on this thing. Yeah, see, now that's good. That's actually beginning to look very much like the other one. Okay. I don't remember what I used for the spine on this, so I'm going to hit OK for the moment, click on this guy, and then I'm going to go 3D Extrude and Bevel, and I used a depth of 100 and a perspective of 39. So let me hit Cancel. Let me go back to this one, and let me double-click on that, and 30, uh, perspective 39, I think. Try that, 39. And this was 100. And let's see if we hit OK what we get. Yeah, nice. That's good. Now what I'll do is I'll just move that over a little bit like this maybe. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is double click on it again. Hit preview. Go to map art. This is the back. This is what I'm calling the back on this one. I'm trying to show two sides. So this is the back. So instead of putting that, which is the front, I'm going to come here and I'm going to put the back on and I'm going to scale to fit. Now, uh, let me just point out to you that because I made the artwork exactly the size that I'm using um, for the background of this thing, I can just click on scale. And also I'm using, I, I made the box the same color as the, um, as the side, I mean, as the, uh, as the background art. I made the, back, uh, the background of the box, I made that, black just like I did the art that's why I can do what I'm doing I can literally just come in here now and and scale to fit and it'll fit perfectly it doesn't distort too much it doesn't get all blown out it gets it just fits pretty nicely so now I'm going to find that side panel and it's right there so I'm going to come in and I'm going to click on the spine and I'm going to scale to fit and there it is the only thing is, I personally think it's going the wrong way. So what I can do if I'm careful is just come in here and flip it around like that. There we go. And that, hit OK, looks pretty good. Hit OK. There is what you are going to do next week. OK? Um, I hope... This is uh, clear enough for you. What I will do is I will go over this again next week. I'm going to come in and I'll do basically the same thing again for you next week on Monday, just as a review so that you have no questions whatsoever. Um, but that's basically what you're going to do. And from here, you know, it's a matter of dressing the background up. You know, like what I did was I just created some nice gra gradients. I also did this drop shadow. Um, I think I showed how that was done, but if you want, if you want me to see me do that, let me know and I'll do that next week. And then I also created that little DVD right there to put in the background. 
Um, so I, I'll do all that and I'll show you how that was done next week. But this is the important thing. What you want to be able to do is you want to sh show the back of the box, the side of the box, the side of the box, the front of the box. This way now you've got a view of the entire thing. That's what it's really all about. And, and it looks pretty nice. And if you follow the directions that I did, do as I did tonight, rasterize it, create your art, rasterize it, create the symbols, make sure that you are working with the size uh, element, the block, this, let me just hide the 3D on this, on this one. All right, see that background is the same background that I used on that symbol. So what I end up with is I end up with a box that's pretty much the perfect size for that thing to go on. And if you hit scale to fit, it should scale to fit perfectly. That's the whole point. When you apply this back here, all right, you see this thing looks pretty good. Now I could go in and I could play around with the lighting on this. Maybe I will. Let me zoom in for a little bit and see if I can, I'll see if I can do a little bit better with that lighting because I got the time to do it. Let's hit preview and let's see if I can do anything with that lighting at all. All right, let's see here. If I come over here, it's dark. You can't really see much. That's the problem. Let me add more lighting. Yeah, it's really not showing up very much. Ambient light. Let's see if I up the ambient light. It's so dark, you know? So dark that. Yeah, see, it's so dark. Cancel. So the other thing that you could do if you wanted to, if you needed to pump this up a little bit, and this is totally up to you, what you could do is this. You could come in here and you could create a gradient shape like this. I mean, it, it, it create a shape like that. And you could take your, bring it over to here and, and put it right on the top, right? So it's at the top. What you could do is you could get this thing here. This is your, uh, here it is, it's right here, I didn't see it. And you're going to use um, free distort. And you're gonna take each corner, all right? See what each corner does? All right, and you're gonna come in and you're gonna line up the corner. Whoops, ah, come on. Right, you line up the, each corner, use this thing. Line up that corner with the right corner right there. Wow, this is, let's go edit undo. There we go, edit undo. It's easier to do it this way. Just carefully click on that and drag it down until it's about where, there we go. Click on this one, bring that one down to there. And then you're just going to carefully click this, drag it up just a touch. So what you're doing is, come on, what you're doing is you're aligning that, there you go. Now let's go down to the bottom one. You're lining that, and then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna click on that, and all you're gonna do is drag it over to that corner right there. You'll see what I'm doing in a minute, and it might make sense when I get it done. Then I'm gonna click on this one, and I'm gonna very carefully just drag that corner down until it hits right there. That's pretty good. This one may come down just a touch, uh, right about there. Well, that's close enough, all right? Let's see if I go view, fit artboard and window uh let's try it and see okay so i select this guy and i'm going to fill it with a gradient there and what i'm going to do with this gradient is for now i'm going to leave it just like this because i want to see what happens so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to go to my transparency okay and i'm going to play with the blend modes let's try lightening it up that's too much Let's try another one. Let's try screen. That's even more. Let's go color dodge. It doesn't come up. Let's go overlay, and that doesn't work. Let's go soft light. It doesn't work. Hard light doesn't work. Yeah, hard light is okay, but it's a little extreme. But you could do this. You could come in here, and you could drag this down like that. Okay? But if you're going to do this, I'm thinking probably overlay would be better or... Uh, soft light, let me see. Let's go back to 100. All right, I don't guess it was, I guess it was uh, lighten. There we go. 
lighten. And then what you're going to do is click on this. And grab, so I use the transparency mode lighten. What it's doing essentially is it's overlaying that gradient over top of this side. And now all I need to do is I, I, I need to just bring it down until it is softer because it's way too extreme. So you just keep coming down until you get just a little bit of it like that, right? Just enough that when you deselect it, you see how that gives you a sharp, clean edge? So you could do that. And why am I doing this? The reason I'm doing this is because I really want my packaging to look great. I really want this to look nice. And all these little added details are going to help this. So what I would do here is I would come over and I would do the same thing over here. I'd come over and I'd make myself a rectangular shape. I might, I might start it here. Where's where I, where I would probably begin. Or better yet, let's try it on this one. Let's do it on this surface here. Let's do it here. Let's do it here. Maybe that'll be fun. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, again, I am going to come in and I'm going to use the free distort, and I'm going to take that corner and bring that corner down and, and drag this until that corner matches up with the upper right corner like that. Now, I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to drag that one in until, and this is the, the point, and this is what's pulling the point. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to carefully pull that guy over until he hits right on the corner like that. Okay, and then I don't know whether, we'll find out in a minute. What I'm going to do is go to transparency, and I think it was lighten. Yes, it was. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing it down. I'll bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. I don't, I don't remember what this one was. Okay, so it was 36. Let's click on this one, 36. I would say probably on this one, you'd go a little bit lower. I'd probably go down to like maybe 25. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Now look at that. I mean, that looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? You can see great three-dimensional quality. You get the best of both worlds. So there is a nice package. What you're going to ultimately do is produce this. This is what you're going to produce. You're going to come up with a box that shows the front and the side and the uh, uh, side and the back. That's, that's essentially what the project is, all right? So there you go. Now, uh, that's it for tonight with all these things. But what I want to do now is I have a couple. Let me hit this. Is, uh, save this for yes. And do the same with this. Let's save this. Yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to go into Critique. And what I have is I have some work here that I said I would critique and talk about. So I got some stuff that I um, uh, wanted to show you. And um, what I did, basically, was I, I took your piece, and I thought about it, and I tried to figure out what, what I would do to maybe make it a little bit better. There's some subtle stuff that I did here. Uh, like, for instance, what I did, you, you have, your, first, your first graphic isn't, isn't bad. Let me see your layers. Your layers, I guess the story, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it right there. Let's lock that. Yeah, so th these guys here, all right, so you got that. That's okay. This is all okay. You've taken the elements apart and you're showing the elements. Um, then what you're doing is your beginning. Uh, so your first step is uh, that we take off all sheets and blankets. Fine. Next, we place the fitted sheet, which is that, I assume, right there is your fitted sheet. And the fitted sheet gets put on first. So what I did, let me open up, I think, file open. Let's see the original. Uh, which one do I have open? Yeah, let's go this one, I think. Yeah, this is the original. So in your original, what you have is this. The problem with this is the, there's no action to it. it. It kind of lacks action. You've got the elements laying there. Next, we place the fitted sheet on to make sure that it is smoothed out. But it's not placed on. It's just sitting there. And, and you don't really get a sense of what is taking place. 
if you understand what I'm saying. So if you go back to what I did, and I'm not saying that my solution is the absolute best solution that there is. It is a solution. My goal here when I did this was next we place the fitted sheet on and make sure that it is smoothed out. By, by doing what I did here, by making this with a blend, which is what I did, and I made blends the other night. See the blend? I make it appear like that sheet is moving over top of this, okay? And I even recreated your little arrow here. I, I came in and I tried to recreate the arrow. I couldn't find a straight one, so I had to recreate it by hand. I tried to make it look similar. And I'm showing that this right here, which is the sheet, is moving on the bed first. That's what I tried to do by, by doing this with the blend, okay? Then the top sheet goes on. I did the same thing with this here, okay? And then the blanket goes on. Now, your secondary graphics are fine. But I just thought, you know, you get a better sense of action this way. Now, again, if I wanted to, this is only showing it as two here. What I could have done is this. And I think the reason I didn't do it was so I could show you how I did this. What I did, literally, was I came in here and I took that guy and I went to transparency. Let me go back to the other one so I can get it exactly right. Let me go view fit our boarding window. Yeah, so I went into this and clicked on that guy right there. And let me click on the direct selection tool or the group selection tool, see if I can get that. Uh, 50%. Okay. So see this guy right here? This guy would become 50%. Okay. And see how he looks? So what I would do is shift click on this guy. I got both of these selected. Or are they locked? Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that actually is on that layer. It is. Okay, so I select both of those guys. I go to the object menu, blend, and blend options. And I had this set to specified steps. And I think I only put one. Let me see. Object, blend, make. No. Yeah, it's, oh, geez. Edit, undo, make blend pattern. That's not it at all. I hit the wrong one. Object, blend, make. There, there you go. Okay, so there is that going on there. The only thing is that this guy here should be, let's go, let's see if I can move that to the front. Let's see if I can click on that and go object, arrange, bring to front. There, okay. So what I'm basically doing is I'm basically doing the same thing there. I'm trying to set this up so that these guys look like they're actually moving from there to there. And the arrow is basically put here. And again, I, I need to zoom in on this arrow because I have that in two pieces. Hold down the shift key. That arrow is in two pieces, object group. Okay, and now I can move that arrow down to about there. I think visually that'll be a little bit better view, fit, artboard, and window. So you get the idea. What I'm basically doing here is I'm trying to make it look like that is actually moving on there. And I'm doing that on all three of these guys. So this guy here is going to be moved down a little bit. And he's going to be made 50%. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to select him. And I'm going to go object, blend, make. And the only thing I need to do is I need to get that other blanket on top because I think it looks better. So I would use the group selection tool. Remember, there is a selection tool. There's a direct selection tool. And the direct selection tool selects nothing but anchor points. It doesn't select items that are grouped up. This one here will select items within a group, okay, within a group. So that object there <coughs> was selected with that tool there, the group selection tool. Object, arrange, bring to front, and now you have 
that happening, okay? So that's my critique. It, it's not a big deal, but again, it's all just a matter of storytelling. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this thing tell a story as best I can. And is, uh, sometimes it's just a, a little bit in the detail object group. And then just move this thing back a little bit in a, in a different position so that you can see the, the actual motion of the blankets. Okay, view, fit our board and window. All right? So that would be my critique of this. Not a big deal. But again, I think it tells a slightly more complete story by actually having these sheets look like they're, uh, they're going. Now, you could even have made that bottom sheet almost white. I mean, let's, let's just try it with this one, just for the heck of it. Let's go object, blend, and let's go uh, release there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy right here. And let's go out to the transparency, and let's set that all the way down to like 10%. Yeah, that's probably 20% is probably pretty good. So now let's click on that one, and let's go object, blend, make. Oh, okay. I have to go to blend options first. Hit OK. Yeah. And now select that. And then object, blend, make. There. And yeah, it didn't work. I don't know what happened. Okay. Click on that. Click on that. Let's try again. Object, blend, make. There we go. Okay. All right, so even that's not too bad. You know what I mean? The bottom line is you just want to give the illusion that that sheet is moving or that uh, blanket is moving or that top sheet or whatever. That's the whole thing. So there it is. That, was, that would be my critique. I mean, you did a decent job. I'm just trying to show you what you might do to make it a little bit better. Okay? So I'll close that out. No. And this one I'll close out. And let's go to the, my last one for the night. And let's go to, um, let's go to Carolyn for two pieces. Let's open them up. There we go. Okay, so we got Carolyn's horse. So what I did here just basically uh, was I, I messed around with her horse to try to give it more dimension. This goes back to week one where we created a horse, okay? Let's go to what she actually created in the first place. This is what she created in the first place. Yeah, I got that as a shape. Okay. This is what she created in the first place. And this didn't have a this didn't have a gradient up there either. See how the gradients in there? All right. I think it was just actually that fill color. Yeah, that's what it was like. Okay. So that is what she did originally. Let's go edit undo. Let's bring it back. So what I did basically was I came over here in the swatches and I demonstrated this the other night. I created several different color swatches. Then what I did was I started to play around with the horse to see whether I could give the horse a more 3D modeled appearance, okay? So I started off by creating this shape right here for his neck and I brought it in to where it, it sits. I think it sits right about there. Okay. Yes, it does. Now, the other thing to understand about this is you've got to be aware of your layers. You got to see what's going on with your layers. One of the problems that I have with her project is she's got all these layers and she doesn't have them named properly. What you really need to do is you need to be aware that when you're working with this object, when you're working with this horse, this overall horse, you have an abundance of shapes and you're going to be adding shapes to it to try to make this thing look more three-dimensional. So it's really important for you to know what your layers are. I sort of got an idea. I see that there's the hair and the tail. Uh, this is on the, this tail is on the same layer as that hair right there, which I don't particularly think is a good idea. And I'll tell you why. Because in reality, the hair is behind the rump of the horse. So what I would do is I would go to the body of the horse and I would create a new layer. And then I would select that right like that. And I would drag that down until it is on the layer just above the horse, body of the horse. Actually, I take that back. Should just be behind it. All right. 
So you got your tail just behind the body of the horse. Now, what I would do then is I'd move it down, okay, move it down so it appears like it's more on the rump of the horse. And then I would maybe make your artboard a little bit bigger, okay? And so that this isn't so staticky looking, what I would do is I'd keep it selected, I might group it object group, and then maybe I'd go object envelope distort, make with warp, and see what I did? This, because I already done this on the other one, you see how I got the arch, and it, and it automatically gave the arch? Now the arch might be too extreme, so what I would do is I'd bring the arch back in a little bit, like maybe that's pretty good, and hit okay. And then all I would do is I'd bring this piece of art, oh, let's go control Z, I got the wrong, yeah, all right, I got the wrong, there we go, got it now. Click on that, and I can bring this down. See, it, it now appears like it's on the rear end of the horse, and my artboard is still a little bit too small, so I just bring the artboard open a little bit. You can always come back in if you need to make the size of this artboard. You can always come back later, and you can make that smaller. Okay, so now I've got, I've got a tail that appears to be coming off the rump end of the horse. That's the first thing, okay? Um, I believe um, Carolyn, I, I discussed with Carolyn the other day how I did this, and I actually did a little bit more of a discussion with her on a number of things here. Uh, but I'm going to do a little bit more now because I have, I got at least a half hour, and I, I doubt very much that I'll, I'll spend the entire half hour doing this, but I'll do a little bit more to show you. So I got this cheek. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give there some, I want to give this face a little bit more three-dimensional quality. So I actually created that shape, which I'm going to lay in there just like that, okay? Now, the head is right here. Look, there's the head. So what I did was I took that shape, and it's my cheek, my right cheek facing it. It's my R-I-G-H-T, and then C-H-E-E-K, right cheek. Okay, so I got that there. I'm going to go to the view menu and I'm going to hide edges for a second. It's still selected. The edges are hit, hidden. I'm going to go to effect. I'm going to go uh, stylize feather. Let's try feathering it. See what we get. Let's come back to about 18. Preview. That's way too much. It's actually looking pretty nice, but I think it's just a little too much. Come back to about 14, 13. Jeez, that looks pretty good, actually, right there. Hit OK. Yeah, that's all I want right there. So I feathered it. OK? Now, he should have some shadow around the top of his eye. So once again, oh, and by the way, what I also wanted to do is I wanted, I wanted to give a highlight under the neck a little bit. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on that head. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer right beneath that head. And I'm going to go, I'm going to select that head, make it sure it's selected, edit copy, edit paste in place, and then I'm going to walk it down like this, right about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a color of light in it, just sort of like that, okay? And then again, with it selected, remember I got view hide edges. See, there's my edges. View, hide edges. And the reason I'm hiding the edges so I can get a sense of what's going on. I just wanted to create a bit of a highlight here so I, I break away his chin from his background. With this selected, what I'm going to do is effect, and I'm going to come down to stylize, feather again. I think we'll try feather again. Hit 13 to preview it. And it's going to go up 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, a little bit more. That's probably good. There, okay? So you see how now there's sort of a highlight going on right there? You got this. Now, let's go back to the layers panel, and you notice that I'm really working with the layers panel quite a bit. This is kind of important for you to understand that. So here's your head, okay? Now, your hair is way up here. So whatever I'm doing down here is cool because the hair will be hiding it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the head layer, and I'm going to create another layer. And this is going to be the uh, uh, eyes. I'm just going to call it eyes. Eyes dash 
um, shadow, S-H-A-D-O-W, shadow. Okay, so what I will do then is I will come on to that layer and I will get my pen tool and I'll just very roughly come around like this and create some sort of a shape that's suggestive of an, an area around the eyes. See what I'm doing? And I'm being very loosey-goosey with this, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the gradient, okay? I didn't get it. Oh, let me get it. Let me get that selected. Let's see if I can get the gradient. Let's try it out. There we go. Okay, so I got the gradient. Then what I'm going to do, remember, I got view, hide edges, okay? See? View, hide edges. And then I'm going to come over with the gradient tool, and I'm going to start playing with the gradient tool to see what direction I want that to go in. I think I want it to go more like that. And actually, let's see, let's try it a little bit more like this. Now, that's not bad, except that I think I want more. Uh, let me see here. Um, I want more of the white coming up. That's good. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to select this guy, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my gradient panel, and I'm going to select that color right there. And what I'm going to do is I could do a number of things. I could try opacity. Let's make the opacity, let's say, maybe 60%. Let's actually bring it down to zero. Yeah, and, and I, get, I still get this weirdness around the edge. That's because I got a a stroke on it, get rid of the stroke, there we go. Okay, there we go, so click on this and go to the gradient, Get go to the gradient and you can sort of play around with this, see? Play around with that and I, again, damn. Make sure that you have your fill forward. <laughs> yeah, go to the gradient and I can start playing around with that gradient and get it to where it's doing what I want it to do. See, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give this face some three-dimensional quality, all right? I'm going to take this thing right here. I'm just going to go edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and I'm just going to take this thing, walk it over like that, and I'm just going to flip it and hit OK. And then I'm just going to bring it over, bring it over in place, sort of like that. Maybe bring it a little bit down, a little bit further down like that. And then what I would do maybe is I would ch change the direction of the gradient. Uh, let's see, maybe, um, actually what I think we'd want to do with this is, yeah, we'd want to stretch that gradient out a little bit more. Yeah, let's get that one out. Okay, so you see how, how it's beginning to stretch out a little bit? Maybe bring this up a little bit so it's stronger. There we go. There we go. See, they don't, they don't look exactly the same. That's the key. You don't want them to look exactly the same, but you want them to be similar. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with above the eye up here. I'm just going to come out. And again, this is something, I'm just playing with this. I don't know. You know, you could keep going and going with this, and you could do something under the eye, like under the eye here. If we go back to um, uh, our layers, you know, I could come in here, and I could go back to my uh, eyes, all right? And I could come in, and I could create a shape just under the eye like this. All right, I don't know whether I got that or not. Let's see. What, yeah, I got it right there. I got that, all right, for that bottom eye. And what I could do with that is, again, go to Effect, uh, Stylize Feather. And it's probably going to be way too much it is. Let's bring it down. Bring it back by going down. It'll come back eventually as I come down. See, it's starting to come back. See it? Oops. Like that. See? And now you're starting to see the eye becoming a little bit more three-dimensional. And hit OK. If you want, you can click on that shape. And you can use the direct selection tool to maybe grab the point of that shape and bring. I didn't get the tool right. Well, actually, that, that doesn't, that's not too bad. Let me go view, show edges. There we go. Now I got it. I can take that point right there and I can drag that point. Now that's my other eye area. Let's see if I object block selection. There we go. Which 
drag that piece, drag that over here. Oh man, this is a uh, pain in the neck. Oh, I got the pick tool right here. Let me get over here. Now try it again. Click on this one, that one point right there, and just move that point. You know, try to move that point up a little bit. And there you go. See it now. The eye of the face is becoming a little. This might need to be. That might need to be blurred a little bit. Effect blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe you want to blur that. You know, like 0.7. Hit preview. Hit OK. Let's see what that looks like. Good. You do the same thing with this guy right here. I think object unlock all. Yeah. Click on this guy right here, and what you're going to do with him is go effect blur, Gaussian blur. And let's preview that, see what that looks like. That's not bad. So you see how now his face is becoming more three-dimensional, okay? And again, you would do the same thing over on that eye. Now you would do the same thing in the body area. What you would do is you would come over here, and like for instance, you got the main body area right here. Uh, it, I don't know whether it would be a good idea to put a, a gradient on the whole thing. So what I would probably do is I would probably build right above it. I'd come up here and I would probably put a layer right above that layer right there. And this would be called my uh, right side, right side shadows. All right. And then what I would do is come in here and I would get my pen tool. Oh, and I'd lock the, the, the layer right beneath it so I can't mess with it. Come in here and click and click and click and click and just make yourself something that fills that area somewhat like this. And then close it out over there. There. And then what I would do is I would simply apply a gradient to it. There we go. And I don't know whether that gradient actually went on there. Let's see. Yes, it did. I think it did. There we go. Okay, that's what I want. So there's my gradient, all right? And then what I would do is I'd, I'd play around with the gradient, you know? I mean, like you need to maybe bring that gradient out a little bit more, make it a little bit more powerful. See what I'm saying? And let's go view hide edges, okay? And that's not bad, but what I would do is, and this is probably pretty good. The color's probably pretty good. What you can also do is click on that color and you can go into HSB. Don't forget, you got HSB. And you can actually start playing around with these colors, making the colors a little bit lighter. Okay, so it doesn't, it's not exactly the same as the other. It's a little bit lighter. You can always do that. And you can then also kill the color down a little bit, making it a little bit more neutral. So now you see how he's beginning to get a little bit more three dimensional. So what I, while I got that thing selected, I'm going to go to the effect and I'm going to click on, uh, let's try uh, stylize and let's feather it and let's see what the feathering does. Um, not bad. Let's go a little bit more. Uh, do I like the feather? I guess I like the feather. Let me hit cancel. Let me go uh, effect blur. Let's try to blur. Gaussian blur just for a different feel. Yeah, and let's drag the blur out. And that's kind of good too, but I, I don't know. Maybe. Now that I look at that, let's hit cancel. Maybe the feather, effect, stylized feather, yeah, and preview it. Yeah, and let's maybe go up a little bit more with the feathering. That's probably pretty good. And hit OK. The problem is that the feathering also hits on the inside there. So what we're going to want to do to make, to make that go away, because you don't want that inside feathered, we're going to go to our layers. And we're going to take a look and see that that guy is right beneath layer 18, which is that guy right there, which is good. So I'm going to click on this and select it. And then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag this thing over further. And what that does is that buries that in there. So now I just got a more three-dimensional look out of this. And I would continue doing the same thing. I mean, maybe what we could do here is click on the overall body. Let's go down and unlock the body. Maybe now it's time to click on the overall body, okay? And go uh, view show edges so we know what we're doing. There it is. And maybe now we click on this color, okay? And okay, so now I got that color in there. And the problem I have with it is that it's not directed right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the gradient tool and I'm going to redirect that color. 
okay? And let's see, I think maybe I wanna go like this. Yeah, that's pretty good. This side over here. See, there's your problem. The problem is that it's really blowing it out over there. So I gotta get rid of that first, and I gotta go uh, edit. Let's go back to the color that it originally was, which I think was that color right there. Whoops. Yeah, I don't want that. There we go. So it was originally that color right there. All right, so then what I would do, here's what I would do, because I don't like what's happening. So what I would do to make this happen uh, is I would go in uh, back to my layers, and I would find my layer, which is his body right there. All right, we'll close the body up. And I would go to layer 24, which is that piece right there. There we go. And I would go to the right side right there, okay? And on the right side, what I would do is I would come in and create another shape back here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be, you know what I mean, like roughly placed there. And see how it's actually putting a gradient in it, I think. Yeah, the gradient's going in it already. So what I would do is now I got that in there. Bring the gradient out. Let's play around with the gradient. Let's see if we can maybe get that gradient to look a little bit better. All right? First of all, what we want to do is maybe redirect the gradient. Let's try putting it in a different direction. Let's maybe make it go that way. A little bit more like that. Yeah, that's probably good. And then this, I'd probably come in and go HSB, and I would probably start making that a good bit lighter, maybe too light. That's probably pretty good right there, okay? And then what I would do is I would go effect either stylized feather. Let's try feathering it to 15. Uh, that's not bad. Let's, let's see what we got there. So you see how now he's, he's kind of beginning to look like he's got some form to him. So, you know, this is just the one side. You'd go over and do the same thing on the other side. This piece here, what I would do with it is I, because it's a line with a stroke on it, see what you got here? You got a line with a stroke on it. So you can't do an awful lot with a line with a stroke on it. So what I would do is, first of all, I would go in, I'd add a darker color to it, more like that color, okay? And I would remove the fill because it doesn't need a fill because it's a stroke, all right? Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go object path offset path and I'm going to offset the path by or I'm sorry cancel I want to go object path uh, outline path that's our outline stroke that's what I want so you see what I did I, I actually turned that into that shape now I can go in and I can start playing with that shape I can pull it out and make that shape thicker which is what I really wanted to do. I can spin it, make it thicker. This is what I'd like to do is make this thing a little bit more thick, and I'd like to make it a little bit shorter as well, okay? And it is actually fighting me. It's going exactly the way I want it, don't want it to go. All right, and maybe I'll go real dark with it. Yeah, let's go real dark with it to start that off. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go, and let's flop it around just a slight bit so it's more like that. What I'm doing is I'm trying to create sort of like an indent area. Now let's go to the effect blur and let's go Gaussian blur on that. Preview it. Okay. And I'm going to bring it out pretty big. Too big. Keep bringing it back until I get there we go. Now I'm getting close. This is what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Right like that. Let's go as far down as I can go. That is probably good. Let's hit OK. And let's go view, fit all in window. OK. And so what's happening now, and I'd have to just keep working on this, and I'd have to keep modifying this and, and keep playing with it. You know, like I can look at that now, and I'm thinking to myself, maybe that is a little bit too um, sharp on the edges. So I'd come in, and I'd stylize, feather it. Maybe I'd feather it a little bit more. Let's go view, view, hide edges. And again, I, I don't know whether feather's right or I don't know whether Gaussian blur is right. I'm going to try them both. So I'd go stylize feather, you know, and I'd come in here and I'd preview it. Okay, and maybe that is the way to go, but it's too much. I'm going to start, oops, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to start bringing it down slowly until I get something 
that works for me. Nine works pretty good. So actually, that's not bad. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, you got a highlight over here. There's a kind of a nice little highlight right there. Let's go view show edges. Yeah, the problem with it is it's a little bit understated. So I'd make it a little bit bigger, I think. What I would do is I'd probably make it a little bit bigger. You know, I'd make more out of it. Let's zoom in on it. And then what I would do is I would just basically rotate it around and get it to fit where I want it to fit, which would be something more like this. All right, and then bring it in like that. And then what I would do is go to the effect menu and go blur, Gaussian blur, okay? And it's too much, so now I'm gonna walk it back, walk it back until I get something that I like. That is it right there. There we go. A little bit more there, that's probably good. View, fit artboard and window. And let's deselect it. You see what's happening? He's beginning to, the, he's beginning to take shape. He's beginning to have some real three-dimensional form. Now, this thing here, I don't exactly like the way that that thing is hanging there, so I might move it over a little bit, and I might actually even extend this a little bit because I like it up by the nose. I like it to end up by the nose. So really, it's just a matter of playing. You know, I see you got these lines here. Here's that line right there. I don't know that you need that line. I'd get rid of it. If you want, you could build another shape down here. Uh, the one that I did, let's see. Yeah, the one that I did, See, I went in and I played around with the mouth. I actually went in and I played around with the mouth, so I gave it some more character. I put actual nostrils onto the thing. Uh, and you can see where I was going with this. It's, I'm doing mostly the same thing uh, on this. Like here, for instance, I'm going to just copy this. Let's go edit, copy. Let's go back to the other one. All right, let's go. It's right here. Let's go edit, paste in front there and then just move it into position, okay? I actually have to move it up like that. And I guess, move it in, there we go, there we go, move it in like that, there we go. And then let's take a look at it, view hide edges. Yeah, and maybe what I would do with that is I would probably stretch it out a little bit, you know, stretch, oops, stretch it out a little bit, there we go. And I would probably go, Effect, blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, this will apply another instance of effect cancel. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Effect, stylized feather. Let's try feathering it by nine. Uh, that's good. Hit okay. There. All right. So you see how he's starting to take on a little bit more plastic form. This is, is by no means done. I mean, and, I, and I'm just throwing this together right now to give you an idea. It's the kind of thing that you would actually have to play with a little bit and build. You know, this is actually looking pretty good. I might work on it a little bit more. These are working pretty good. So really what it is, is kind of a combination between what I'm doing here and what I'm doing over here, okay? Not, this one isn't finished either. But you can see that I'm heading in the same sort of direction here that I was here. So again, um, Carolyn, for your information, this is something that you don't need to do. I gave you your grade. It's not a problem. All I'm doing is showing you a little bit more about how to work with gradients. I'm not, I'm not doing the best job of this because I don't have the picture of the horse to work from. If I actually had a picture of the horse to work from, I think I'd probably be doing a lot better with it because I would actually follow the highlighting and shadowing that would be uh, inherent in the picture of the horse. But since I don't have that, I'm faking the whole thing. And I'm, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give it some sense of three-dimensional form. So that's it for my critique. I hope it all helped you. Um, I will be tomorrow night in Blackboard from seven o'clock until 12 Mountain Time. Um, I, you can contact me by email or my phone, you know, you know both of them. And I also will be available Saturday night from seven o'clock until midnight mountain time in Blackboard. So if you need anything, if you want anything, you want to work with me, you want to critique, whatever, you know, don't hesitate, come and see me. Uh, until then, you have a nice rest of the week and I will uh, see you next week. Okay. Have a good night.